I had originally planned to start off this series with what the manosphere gets wrong about the 1950s, but after watching Donovan Sharp's debates with Gustav Janus, they discussed rape and although I enjoyed the conversation, I realized there was a lack of historical context in the conversation. So for this first short video, I'll discuss what the manosphere gets wrong about marital rape. How in the f does your husband, your husband, how does your husband rape you? It's not something that the Manosphere only believes in, but it amazes me that a well-established concept is confusing to some people. If you're interested in the history of sexual violence in the United States, these are the works that inform my notes. It's not comprehensive, but these are some of the books I would suggest reading. Sharon Block's Rape and Sexual Power in Early America, Martha Hose, White Woman, Black Men, Illicit Sex in the 19th Century South, Estella B. Freeman, Redefining Rape, Sexual Violence in the Era of Suffrage and Segregation, and Daniel McGu, if I pronounce that right. At the dark end of the street, black women rape and resistance, a new history of the civil rights movement from Rosa Parks to the rise of black power. Now to provide some social context, Americans understanding for what constitutes rape and who could actually be a victim of rape, as Freeman argued, has largely been attached to who has rights to full citizenship. The traditional understanding of a rape victim was a brutal attack on a chaste, unmarried white woman by a stranger, which typically became portrayed as a black man in the 19th century. In the colonial era, a woman who was raped had to report the case immediately and had to show physical signs of resistance. Since rape is attached to citizenship, enslaved women, Native American, and Mexican women had no legal protections, and black and Native men were often sentenced to death, whereas middle and upper middle class white men were often acquitted. Prior to 1861, southern states excluded black women from rape laws, and culturally, black women were imagined as, quote, prostitutes at best and a sexual beast incapable of virtue at worst. According to historian Crystal Feimster, black women actively claimed sovereignty over their bodies during the Civil War after President Abraham Lincoln and four the Library Code of 1863, which sought to deter soldiers from raping women. For the first time, the idea that black women could be victims of sexual violence was enforced and black women were able to testify against their perpetrators. And if you want to know more about this, you can check out the links below, because I can go on a long tangent about sexual violence in the Civil War, and I don't want to do that. I provided all this context to say that our understanding for what constitutes rape and who can be a victim of rape has and continues to expand. And it was women activists of all races and ethnicities who actively worked to expand the definition. So that leads me to marital rape, which some folks in this space seem to believe is impossible. The idea that a husband can rape his wife was controversial in the suffragist era. English common law, which many traditional laws in the U.S. hail from, have long held the notion that a man couldn't rape his wife. Although a woman's sexual past could be brought up in a trial, marriage was viewed as permanent consent. Suffragists largely avoided the topic of a husband's right to his wife's sexual service, but anarchists like Emma Goldman and one feminist, Elizabeth Caton Stanton, called for female sexual self-sovereignty within marriage. After the suffragist movement, post-suffragists continued to leave the marital exemption alone as rape laws expanded. Before the 1970s, a wife could divorce her husband if he raped another woman, but not so if he assaulted her. But feminists in the 1970s increasingly challenged the exemption and in 1975, South Dakota became the first state to outlaw marital rape. After a husband who was in the middle of a divorce in Salem, Massachusetts broke into his wife's home and raped her in 1979, states began following South Dakota's lead. By 1993, every state changed its laws and made marital rape illegal. Now that was a lot of history, and like I said, this was going to be brief, so if you want to know more, I left some links in the description. Again, this is just a short video. The Man Affair certainly isn't alone in this assumption, but it's another indicator of the group selling retrograde patriarchal ideas to its young fan base.